All right, so for today's project, we're actually over at the neighbor's house and we're doing yet again another drainage project. So they just built this awning on the back of their house and they had a new downspout that they wanted to connect. So I saw this as a good opportunity to come over here and film a little video on how I would connect a downspout. We also have a French drain over here that we're gonna take a look at, open it up, see what it looks like, and I think now's a good time to replace it as well. So the plan is uh, to do two pipes all in the same trench, one of them being a French drain, one of them being the downspout. Some would say this is a little bit overkill, but I wanna show you what I did, how I did it, so I hope you guys stick around. So the patio is a pretty decent size at roughly 20 feet by 30 feet and it's sloped so all the water is going to drain from the house and kind of deck area out towards that gravel area. Here's the awning and downspout that was installed last year and since then we've had a temporary pipe here just dumping water out onto the patio and then it'll eventually flow down into the gravel area where that French drain is. And then that drain carries all the water that comes off of the patio over to an existing drain that we made a video about last year and then eventually down to the street. The one reason I said we were going to replace this French drain is because when we take a look at it, uh, the pipe's almost flush with the top of the concrete, a little bit higher than I'd want. Technically, it still works and it's doing its job, but while we're here, we might as well replace this and put it down a little bit deeper. To start any drain project, we always want to start at the lowest area and work our way back. So I'm starting over here near where we're connecting the drain to. Uh, there happens to be some decently nice grass here, so I'm going to start off by removing the sod. This isn't something that you'd have to do, but it definitely makes things look nicer when you're going to put stuff back together. Uh, it just takes a little bit longer. So I'm taking a flat shovel, I lined out where I want this to go, and then I'm cutting down about three inches or four inches underneath that grass so that we're keeping the root systems and then I'm putting it on this tarp just to make cleanup a little bit easier later. Then I dug down to expose the existing drain that we're going to be connecting into and I was surprised at how shallow it actually was. So that's something that we're going to have to work with but once I got over that thought I just kept digging and this time of year in the early spring it's really easy to dig and that clay came out in super huge chunks. Then I came back and kind of cleared out the bottom of the trench so we had a flat bottom to our trench keeping in mind that I want this to go slightly uphill. Using a level, I came back and checked the slope of the trench, just making sure that I'm going slightly uphill. That pipe isn't that deep in the ground, so I can't get too aggressive with my slope. The only thing that I'm looking for here is to see the bubble is slightly closer to the uphill side of the trench, or on the left-hand side in this case, just showing us that we're still going slightly uphill. Once I knew I was at a good spot slope-wise and depth-wise at the corner of the patio, then I started working my way further down, removing all of the gravel. Now, I could have removed all this gravel and fully replaced it, but this stuff is, is still good, um, and it was a whole lot easier just to kind of drag it out of the way here. Once all the gravel was removed, then we could see part of the pipe that was already sticking up higher than we really wanted it, uh, and then I removed the pipe. The pipe came out of the ground relatively easy, yet again, because it wasn't that deep. And then the one thing that I kind of observed when removing the pipe was how little dirt was actually inside of this pipe. People all the time freak out on the internet that you have to use fabric and that you have to have four inches of gravel underneath your pipe and around the pipe or two inches of gravel underneath the pipe. And they have all these things that you have to do to make a successful drain system. And I know that this isn't, you know, like most drains out there, but the trench, you could tell, wasn't really wide when it was installed. There wasn't a crazy amount of gravel around this pipe, and there, there wasn't a ton of dirt inside the pipe. And this thing has been in the ground for over 20 years. Once the pipe was removed, I just kept on digging, and I kept on digging a trench, which some people might say is excessive. Uh, this is about 18 to 20 inches wide, but I needed that width so that I could fit two pipes in there comfortably. And then I keep coming back and checking the slope with a level, just making sure that I'm not going uphill too steep so I don't get myself into a bind later on in the trench.
Later that night, I finished up the digging, doing the part from the corner over to the downspout. Um, and right here, you can see that it's not that deep. The pipe really is only going to be two to three inches underneath the ground. Um, not ideal, but it's going to work. As it got darker out, I was able to use one of my new favorite tools, this laser level. And I'm using it to check the slope of the trench. The laser sends out a horizontal or level line, and I'm measuring from the bottom of the trench to that laser and checking the distance. Really, the only thing that I care about is as I get further away from the laser, that that number continues to shrink. That's telling me that the trench is going up and that I have the slope that I need. Over the 60 foot distance, I have about eight inches of slope from pipe to gutter, so I gotta be pretty close. For this project, I'm using a geotextile fabric. I'm not 100% convinced that you have to do this, and some people would say that it's overkill or actually detrimental. Personally, in the projects that I've done, I've seen it work great and work really well. It may depend on your soil type or where you're located. That might be something that you want to look into. The one thing I do want to specify is this is not a landscaping fabric. It is not a weed barrier. It's a fabric that's specifically designed for water to flow through and keep out sediment and dirt so that it doesn't clog up your drain system. Uh, you can see that I'm putting it down inside the trench. I'm pinning it in as I go just to hold it in place. And then I'm making sure that it sits all the way down in the bottom of that trench in place exactly where I want it to be later. Uh, then I'm coming back with a utility knife and, and, and attempting to cut it. The one thing that I'll say is this stuff cuts so much better with scissors than a utility knife. Uh, but it not cutting all the way through and me kind of just perforating it here actually worked out better in the long term when I went to go ahead and put put everything back in the way that we're doing this. I started off by putting in the solid corrugated pipe that was going to act as our downspout drain, and that's going in the far side of the trench, furthest away from the concrete. Then I put in the perforated pipe that we're going to use as our French drain right up against the edge of the concrete there. Taking a closer look at the pipe that I'm using here, on the left hand side, we have the solid corrugated pipe used for the downspout. No holes in it, it's not absorbing any water, it's just going to be moving water that comes down the downspout. Then on the right hand side, we have the perforated corrugated pipe that has holes or slots in all sides of it. That's going to be used to absorb groundwater and the water that's coming through the gravel that has come off of the patio. Then in the center, we have the solid hard wall pipe that's a little bit stronger that we're going to be putting in a higher traffic area just in case something heavier has to drive over it. To prep the trench to be filled, I then capped off the end of the French drain pipe just so nothing got in there. Then I came back using old patio paver stones just to hold the pipe in place so that when we're pouring in the gravel, the pipe doesn't move. I wanted the French drain pipe as close to the concrete as I possibly could and the downspout line as far away as I possibly could, leaving that trench as wide as possible so we had a ton of gravel in there and up water. Um, I'm placing the French drain pipe all the way at the bottom of the trench, which I know some people really don't like, but I'm using the fabric. A lot of people like to use one or two inches of gravel underneath their pipe to create a barrier. My barrier that I'm using is the fabric and the fabric is going to hopefully separate the dirt from the bottom of that pipe so none of that dirt ends up seeping up into the pipe and clogging anything up. And then you can see here I have the pipes in place held down exactly where I want them. The only thing is they got a little bit more narrow when we had to go around the footer for the basketball hoop. Then over at the existing drain that we're connecting to I lined up this Y and cut out a piece so that it would fit. I like using Y's a little bit better because I think they promote the flow of water a little bit better rather than using something like a T. Plus it worked out really nice here with the angles and getting it over to where we needed to. Then over on the other side, I used another Y to connect the downspout line and the French drain line. We're at this point, we're done picking up water, so we don't need perforated pipe anymore to continue picking up water. We just want to move it. So it's going into that hard wall pipe. The angles that we had here didn't line up 100% correct. And to be honest, these two pipes or connectors are not meant to connect together or work together. Um, so I just used a little tile tape to make sure that these connections were tight. They weren't going to go anywhere and they were going to flow water. After everything was installed, I chose to start backfilling the dirt areas first, and to be honest, digging it was almost a little bit easier. All this clay came out in big chunks. Now when I'm going to backfill it, now I have to break it all up into smaller chunks uh, to get it to pack in against the pipe nice. I chose to do the dirt first just to hold these places in, and we could eliminate a mud problem before it rains. But you could really do it in any order, just making sure that we got things packed in uh, so that it didn't sink over time. Over at the downspout, this connection wasn't 100% perfect. It might be changed a little bit. Uh, we used a, a 90 degree elbow up into one of the white pieces of that solid pipe that we had and then into a gutter connector. Filling in around the pipe was pretty easy now. All that dirt that we dug out of there isn't coming back. We're filling the entire trench in with gravel to make sure that we have the biggest void that we have. 
I'm filling it in with washed river gravel. And I like the washed river gravel because I think it leaves bigger pockets. The round stone doesn't pack together as well, leaving larger voids, meaning that water should flow through it faster. With the trench partially filled with gravel, it held everything in place, and now is a good time to go back and cut the fabric the rest of the way through. This time using scissors, everything cut a whole lot better. If you've ever seen any of my other French drain videos, uh, this is the point where I would not cut the fabric, and I would use the burrito method where I wrap the entire French drain in a, a burrito of gravel in the geotextile fabric. But in this case, the trench wasn't very deep, and I didn't want to have the fabric too close to the surface where anybody could accidentally pull it up, you know, slide into it and pull up that fabric and expose it and have problems later. So just cutting it off where it was at ground level keeping it inside the trench it still works great and does what it needs to do it separates the dirt from the gravel and the pipe that it's trying to protect and then as you can see i come back remove the patio pavers because those were only there temporary to hold stuff in place and i rake the gravel back in over top the last major step was to install the sod over the area that went through the yard i tried to line it up the best that i could with where it came from i left it a little bit high because ultimately it's going to sink a little bit i tried to knead it in the best that i could to get it to line up on the edges and then just watered it in and I'll come back for the next few days to come and water it in really well so that the roots take and it continues to grow. All right, so at this point, the project's pretty much wrapped up. My job here is done. The homeowner has a few other little things that they're gonna uh, kind of finish up around here. But uh, as you can see, the, the patio looks a whole lot better. The patio was pressure washed, all the rocks are put back in place, the, ground, the grass is starting to grow back where we replaced that sod. Um, so for all intents and purposes, you would never know that we actually did anything back here, which is you know, just the way that you want these projects to turn out. Um, so overall, kind of like I alluded to at the beginning of the video, the way that we did this was definitely way overkill. Um, we could have just ran that downspout right into the end of that existing French drain and everything would have worked perfectly fine. The amount of water that's going to come off of that roof and go down through the downspout is not enough that it would do anything bad to that, to that French drain. Um, I think the major reason that you want a separate pipe or a solid pipe is because you're, you're purely carrying water. Where a French drain, some of that water could leach out into the trench and whatever. Really a French drain is designed to pick up groundwater or water that's coming down through gravity fed through the top gravel uh, and making it in there. So technically I think that was the correct way to do it and in doing it yes it was a little bit more work a whole lot more work actually but I think this was the right way to do it and I think this drain is going to last for plenty plenty of time as long as this person ends up living here. So if you're still watching the video at this point, I really appreciate it. If you wouldn't mind and you liked it, please hit the thumbs up button. Uh, if you're looking forward to or you want to see any of the other projects that I do around here, uh, I'm probably going to have some more drainage stuff, awning stuff, all kinds of stuff. Uh, definitely I would consider subscribing. But it is starting to rain out here, so maybe we'll get to see how this thing works sooner than later. Uh, but other than that, I hope to see you in another video.